G'day and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking through the three key reasons that you need leaders in your allied healthcare business. Now, the reason that I wanted to share this with you today is earlier on in my journey as a healthcare business owner, and I'm a physiotherapist by trade, we actually, so my business partner and I, we, we stepped back a little bit. You know, we, we'd hit the point in business where we were pretty happily where we were going at the moment, the number of clients coming in, the number of team members that we had. And we wanted to be able to step back just a little bit to get some of our own life back, you know? So it wasn't just, we wanted to be working 60, 70 hours a week consistently for the rest of our lives. And so what we found is as we slowly stepped back and we were in the clinic less, and granted, we did this a little bit too fast, but as we stepped back, maybe not so slowly, what we found is that the wheels start to fall off a little bit. Uh, someone over here would have a, a bit of a challenge around this one and they might feel frustrated that they weren't as supported in their eyes as they were previously because we weren't available 24 seven. And someone over here had a question at 3.30 PM on a Monday and, and maybe we weren't there to give them the answer that they needed. Okay, you can start to see it. it's just these little things here and there. But the challenge and the reason that I'm telling you this story is when we did this, the reason it wasn't successful and the wheels fell off a little bit and we went from stepping back to having to jump back into exactly where we were and feeling a little bit desperate and hopeless at that stage is because we didn't put leaders in place. We didn't have the right structures. We didn't have the right systems in place in order to do that successfully. And so six months later, pull it three, six months later, we decided let's do it again. And when we did it this time, we were able to successfully step back and actually be able to have a business that ran like a business that wasn't solely dependent on us as the business owners, a business that allowed our team members to achieve their goals that really genuinely helped our clients and the community. And at the same time, we had our lives back. And not to say that we weren't at the clinic and we, we weren't working on that, but we now had time for those other things in our life our family, travel, find of things, right? My business partner went in and he started his family. I was able to move away to a different state. I live in the Gold Coast. The clinics are in Adelaide. And so what I'd like to talk through today are the three key reasons and how to do this. So reason number one. Now, first reason that I believe that you need leaders in your business is because it, there needs to be someone except you that people can look to when you're not there. And it may seem super obvious, and it was to us eventually, but at the start, we didn't realize that, that if someone had this support network here, and that support network was always us, if we weren't there, they wouldn't feel supported. I told you, it would sound super simple. And so you need to make sure that there is always a support network, a system for support for each and every person within your business. And it can't always be you because if it's always you, then you're trapped always in that role. You'll have no freedom. You won't be able to step back successfully. And the second one, it's impossible for you to continue to be the best version of yourself. You continue to burn yourself out by always being that support person, that go-to person and not having other people in those roles that you can share that load with. It's also unreasonable to expect that you're always the best person to support someone. If I think back to my own clinics, when I look at our leadership team, it was made up of a diverse range of people. We had uh, admin team members, we had physios, we had males, we had females, we had people with different perspectives and different ways of looking at the same problem. And it gave us a lot of opportunity when we were working with people to be able to make sure that we had the right person supporting that team member at any one time. The third reason is that in order for your business to really grow and hit those next levels, people need progression in their role. And if we can't offer progression where people can go from here to here to here and actually climb that ladder a bit and see their role change and see their responsibilities change and have that growth themselves, then they're not gonna stay for as long as we'd like them to. If we, we look at so many other professions, Right, and I'll use allied health as an example here. As a therapist, a lot of the time when you graduate, you're a therapist and you work with clients. And 40 years later, you can be doing the exact same job. 
you know, albeit you may be doing a lot better and a lot more confidently, and you may be helping people at, people at a greater scale, but you may still be doing the same work. And for some people, they look at that and they go, well, that's actually a little bit, it's not ideal. It's not what I want. I want to be able to have my role change and grow and those responsibilities change over time. Because when we look at a lot of other businesses, there's a ladder to climb and people have different roles throughout their lives. And I look at so many people leaving the allied healthcare profession after three, four, five, six years. And I wonder how much of this is attributed to the fact that there aren't pathways available or people leaving private and going to the public sector because there is a ladder to climb there, their, their roles and responsibilities, they would change over time. So what we'd love to create are those progressions and pathways within our own businesses. Because that is how we keep people long-term within our clinic. For most people, if we can show them that they can achieve this, they can go to that next level, then they don't have to either go to the public system, change career, or open their own clinic. And talking to, to so many young physios especially, so many of them see it that way, that it's one of those three that they have to do in order to feel that career growth, to feel that life progression. And I believe we can combat this. So how do we do it then? How do we put all of this together? Well, where I would start is by starting with the end in mind here. So where do we wanna be in three years time, in five years time? Okay, so let's put that fence post in first. Let's say in three years time, you want your business to be able to run without you. Now, albeit you may want to be there and you may love being a part of that, but you wanna build it into a business that isn't actually dependent on you. So let's say at the moment you're doing 60 hours a week of supporting everyone within the team. It's probably reasonable to think then that you're gonna need three to four people that are doing 15 to 20 hours of those roles because you're not gonna find someone who's gonna do 60 hours per week. So then looking at the team and going, well, who here would actually like to move into those roles? Who would love to have those responsibilities? Because it's not everyone, okay? So it's really the personal choice to wanna to do these things. But even just bringing this up with team members and talking about this is where we would like to be in three years time or in five years time. This is what I'd love it to look like. And these are the roles and responsibilities we're gonna to have to create in order to achieve this. And just by sharing that with your team, you're much more likely to find out, A, do they want to be involved in doing that? But also at the same time, you're showing them what they don't know because so many people, they don't know that it's an opportunity to have these pathways, even if you do have them within your business, unless you clearly and consistently communicate it to them. And unless they see other people following those pathways. So if we're looking at long-term retention here, and this is something that we're everyone's talking about at the moment, is how do we keep people for the long-term, long-term retention? So much of this, I believe, is going to come back to the pathways that we can offer our team members for growth within their role, for change within their role, to add more responsibility, to change what they do when they come to work. And it doesn't necessarily mean they don't see any clients anymore, but what small response, like small portfolios, I guess you could call it, or responsibilities can they take on and grow over time that adds value to the clients, to the team, and to the business. So if you've made it this far, what I would love you to do is to get your plan out and have a look at your plan for 2023, 24, 25, whatever year it is that you do watch this video in. And I want you to go, where am I now? In, and clearly map out and articulate what support does the business have from a leadership perspective for the younger people within the team, the other people within the team, whether it be admin, whether it be therapists, okay? And then I'd like you to say in three years or in five years or even in 12 months, whatever it may be, let's say three years time, this is where I would like the business to be from a support structure perspective. And I want you to very clearly articulate and map that out. And then I want you to look at where do you need to be in three months time to be on the right track to hit that. And then when we've got that down, what I'd love you to do is go, what is one key action that you can take in the next week that is gonna move you closer or move the needle towards that goal, towards the goal of creating more freedom within your clinic, towards the goal of creating more 
team retention through offering them pathways and progressions and to creating the business of your dreams. I'd love to know in the comments below, what is that one key action? Chuck it down there. I will be responding to every single comment here myself. And I'd also like to know, what would you like to hear more about? Again, leave that one in the comments for us. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.